This is the Maserati Gran Turismo Sport 2014 model. Very much like the Ferrari California that came out at the same time. Also designed by Pininfarina. Big lusty V8 at the front, almost 450 horsepower. Rear wheel drive, two plus two coupe. Fantastic. And they were about the same price. But the thing about Maseratis, they depreciate quickly. So eight years later, you can buy this car for half the price of that Ferrari. Now with normally aspirated V8s becoming collectible, why wouldn't you consider buying one of these? You might say because of Maserati's reputation for poor reliability. This is not one of those by turbos from the 1980s. These modern Maseratis are good reliable cars. Michael's driven this 60,000 kilometres, no trouble at all, cheap servicing. So maybe it's looking like good value, but how is it to drive? Let's get him in the driver's seat and we'll find out. Hello viewers. Hello Michael, good morning. Good morning Stewie. And we've got our guest host Michael back again today. Yes, Mark is coming back, so don't worry Mark fans. Mark Did... should be reviewing this car, not me, because this is a real driver's car. Aren't you a real driver? Well, Maserati is one of those manufacturers that gets all their bits and pieces from a lot of sources. So basically you could say that they get the best of what's available and put it in and make a, a really good motor car out of it. Mm. So it's got the beautiful naturally aspirated quad cam V8 engine, mm. it's the ZF six speed auto uh, torque converter transmission. There's two available in these. The other one's an automated manual, yeah, like, yeah, the, like it, the F1 track. I, I actually Ferrari. took one of those for a drive before I purchased this and it was, for just a daily driver, I thought this was far better for for what I was going to be using the car for and yep. you know doing long trips. I really like the ZF transmission in this car. It's the same as the one in the in the Jaguar F type we reviewed recently. There's a lot of they put them in a lot of cars. The yeah. the um, Mercs, some of the big Mercs even have them. Yep. And uh, good solid reliable unit. Um, Cuz Maserati, let's face it, their reputation wasn't built on reliability for a number of years. No, like and, that, and I you know, was a bit hesitant when I bought my first Maserati about that, but I have found that to be just the opposite. I haven't uh, had had an issue with any of it. I've probably done 60,000 k's of Maserati motoring and not had one issue at all. They were designed very quickly, nine months, because Maserati got wind that Ferrari were doing the California. Didn't they try and copy it? One bloke copied the other? Well, I reckon well, they have both, looking at the design. They're both designed by the same car guy, Pin and Farina's studio, just doing both at the same time. Maserati said, hang on, we were going to do a front engine V8, rear wheel drive, two door, two plus two, and they go, well, the California's coming out. The parallels with the California are very strong. It's just a little bit faster, a little bit more powerful. If you were to buy a Ferrari California now, now they're seven or eight years old, as this car is, $210,000. Yeah, so, right. Australian. This car, 100. Half that. Yep. Half so that. suddenly, this is looking like real value. Nonetheless, nonetheless, I reckon around 2005, 2006, Maserati started getting its act together and making really nice cars. Just about the same time, the Aston Martin Vantage V8 came out. Yeah, they were and, nice too. And, and a bit later, the F Type J came out. But our first Maserati that we had was a 2007. Quattroport. I, Paul yeah. and I were at a uh, dealer looking at a another car and she wandered off and came back over and she said, oh, you've got to come and have a look at this car over there. She said, I've never seen a car with a nicer interior. Whoops, Skippy. There you go, living in Australia. That's it. They're everywhere. Yes. <laughs> if you're from the UK or America or anywhere that's not Australia, that's what you have to contend with. And those bastards are big and heavy and if you hit them, they heard. We're going to outrun them in a Maserati. So Pauline said, oh, I've never seen a car with a nicer interior because she does like Italian handbags and Italian shoes. And, yes. Yeah. And I went and had a look at this car and I thought, oh, wow. So long and short of the story is we, we purchased that car and I, that was my falling in love with, with the quality on a Maserati. Mm. When uh, they announced some time later that they were going to discontinue the V8, I said, oh wow, I, I would, wouldn't mind getting a two-door and a V8 because mm. I really just, mm. they took my eye. Took a few for a drive and yeah, ended up buying this one, so. I have to say, personal preference, and I'm sure you agree, 
the styling of the two-door coupe is is nicer than the the quattroport here. Oh, the quattroport was a big, big, it's huge in the back. Well, That's this a, is a long car too because there's a fair amount of overhanger that that droopy fish nose. Some people don't like that, but I actually quite do. I like the on, way on this one I do. Slopes, it slopes it down to the front. And then you've got the axle, and then the motor's completely behind the axle, yeah, which pushes up. you and me right towards the middle or back of the car. Probably why it sits so well on the road, like it's got yeah. that perfect balance of a 49% front, 51% rear, yep. and uh, yeah, you really notice it in the corner. If you're setting it up as a track car, that's exactly how you'd balance the car. Um, do you like the sound of The seats do not hold you though, they're, they're not bad, but there's... Do you notice how the, the side of the seat actually comes right in touch with the doors? Do you oh, yeah. see that? Yep. And then the the armrest actually comes over the side of the seat. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a... In that sense, it's good. So you brace yourself with your elbows. Yeah, pretty because much. Because you're not quite getting the, the, the lateral support that you need. No, lateral support. I took it down to the track at Wakefield one day, just um, <laughs> to a Porsche day. You ended up in the passenger seat. Well, yeah, it was a, you know... It certainly had some grip in the corners and braking, but just not... Not good on a track, but I'll tell you what was interesting about that track day, it was a Porsche track day and the first lap I just went around and warmed it up. The second lap I come past and I thought, oh, got a bit of an audience. And the third lap I really let it go down the straight there and yeah. all the Porsche guys were, were out. The, uh, the sound of the Maserati V8. And just as a reminder what it sounds like. Just... It's hard to imagine a better sounding V8 than that. Oh, isn't it? I've had it up on the hoist and underneath the piping underneath from the engine back to the exhaust, it looks like something out of a you know a church organ. Front pillars are huge, aren't they? They are. Well, this has got a um, steel and aluminium chassis. Yep. Yeah. It, it feels double really wishbone strong. front end. Yep. 454 horsepower. 454 horses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Torques up top too, so it's not. Yeah, it's, it's not, not a talky motor. Like yeah. maximum torque's over 5,000. So yeah, it's high, isn't it? Yeah. Like it, it, it loves to sing up high. Oh yeah. You know, it's a, if I'm going along the road and lock, lock it in and have it up in sixth. You go to overtake something and you think, come on. Yeah. Do something. Yeah, do something because there's no torque. Take it out of lock. Yep. And want to overtake something and let it rev up. Yep. And there it is, six yeah. grand, seven grand. Oh, I think that's fast enough, Michael. Yeah. Just about ready for coffee, how are you? What about oh, you? Coffee time. So we're... Coffee. This is the big metropolis of Burua. So does this car get a lot of attention from people when you park it? Do they come and go, oh, wow, what's that? Or... Oh, I had one day there. Was, here's a young lass leaning back on the bonnet and the boyfriend's taking photos. Oh, oh, oh no. Especially when she had Levi jeans yes, on. Yes, studded it. jeans. You go, I appreciate the sentiment, but yeah. get off my car, please. That's exactly right. I always say that if you, uh, if you don't, after you've locked your car and you're walking away from it, if you don't turn around and look back at it, <laughs> it's not really the right car for the you. The right car for you. <laughs> okay, is Borowa got a is Borowa got a, a, a charging station? I very much doubt it. Why don't we check on your clever infotainment system to look for the no, nearest charge station? They didn't have electric cars back in those days. I'll just push the electric charge station buttons, and nothing happened. No, it says petrol only. They never bothered updating this, did they? They designed it no, in the mid 2000s. And it was the same up until 2019 when they discontinued the car. Hey, this car's got a reversing camera. Yeah, look, it doesn't do the steering wheel like, oh, the, well, like the... They only brought that in halfway through the model cycle for this car. That, what else has this car not got? Mm. Hasn't got active emergency braking, hasn't got lane keep assist, hasn't got... It's got an ice maker. Got an ice maker? Yeah. You know, Maserati, shortly after the war, when they had the, the 1500 GT, 
Beautiful car. And the A6 GCS. Another beautiful car. And the 450S. Stunning Four, looking. That, the 450S, it's, don't you notice this was a little bit like that? With the it is. wheel arches and the, the front of the cars. A lot of us are not very familiar with Maserati, so let's have a short history. The story of modern Maserati road cars is quite a confusing one, with the company having partnered with or being owned by so many other manufacturers over the years. Citroen, De Tomaso, Chrysler, Alfa Romeo, Fiat, Abarth, Ferrari, they've all been involved at some point. So here's the short version, but pay attention because there's going to be a test later. The Maserati brothers founded the company in 1914 using the trident on the statue of Neptune in their hometown Bologna as their emblem. Primarily, they focused on racing cars, and in 1940 they even won the Indy 500, the only Italian manufacturer ever to do so. But we'll pick up the story a bit later. The pivotal and beautiful cars of the late 1950s were the A6 GCS road car and of course the magnificent 250F, in which Fangio won the last of his five world championships. I think everyone's favourite is the famous Tipo 61 birdcage Maserati. When they withdrew from racing in 1957, the 3500 GT was important as their first ground-up Grand Tourer. The 1960s saw the Sebring, the Ghibli and the Mistral, and the first four-door, obviously called the Quattroporte. Engines were typically quad-cam V8s. In the late 1960s, Citroën took over Maserati and used Maserati V6 engines in their flagship car, the SM. They shared technology. Citroën learned how to have sexier engines and Maserati learned all about hydraulics and suspension. The Indy was not a huge success, but the sexy mid-engine Bora and Mirac sold a little bit better. The next generation Quattroporte 2 shared the same layout that Citroën loved with its own SM, being mid-front engine, front-wheel drive with hydropneumatic suspension and headlights that turned. You never really think of Maseratis as being front-wheel drive, and thankfully it did not catch on. The Kamsen was a much better idea, using Maserati traditional front engine V8 with rear wheel drive. But then the 1970s oil crisis intervened, Citroen went bust and Maserati followed. Jobs lost, big drama, strikes, factories closing, and in 1975 Alejandro de Tomaso came to the rescue and bought the company. They struggled on with the slow selling Bora and Mirac and the Kailami, which was based on a de Tomaso car. I dare say the 1980s were not a high point, as Maserati abandoned its sexy mid-engine layout in favour of front-engine cars. The bi-turbo and its variants were not very pretty, I think, but sold well and soldiered on right into the 1990s. De Tomaso eventually sold out to Fiat, who eventually sold a half-share to arch-rival Ferrari. By the turn of the century, every man and his dog had had a share in Maserati. But we're seeing important road cars now, with the 3200 GT, Gran Turismo, Gran Cabrio, and a fourth iteration of the Quattroporte. The USA became a major market. Their racing credentials improved a lot with the successful MC12, a real supercar, which was based on the Ferrari Enzo. But the influence of the powerful Fiat Group really helped in the early 2000s, with retooled factories, a lot more money, and I dare say better build quality. Maserati realized that to compete with Mercedes-AMG, it really had to lift its game in terms of performance and reliability, which it did and it focused on what it was good at, GT cars, and resisted the temptation to build smaller vehicles as it had done in the past. The shock announcement to me this year, that Maserati will produce an electric version of all its models by 2025 and phase out internal combustion completely by 2030. All Maseratis will then be known as Folgore, Lightning, so I guess they'll be fast. Here we go. Going for a bit of a spiritual time, Stewie. Redemptress brothers and fathers. Oh, what's that here? This, this is, is European. This is, is yeah. this is just like driving out to Versailles out of Paris. There's a cemetery over here. You really have to take your hat off to these guys. Like, you know, they gave up their lives to teach kids and... Okay, we'll just quietly potter through without disturbing how about that? Have you ever been to a no, funeral on your car review, Yeah, That's a first. <laughs> One thing I do... I do miss about this Maserati, the GT, yeah. as opposed to my uh, four-door. Down here under the um, steering column, the yeah. Quattroport had a, had a pistol holder, 
on a secret little secret little flap and you can actually open the flap grab the pistol with one hand yeah yep it was fantastic that was useful when you were finding yeah. your hostage to put in the boot absolutely yeah oh it's your twin brother in there yeah g'day mate <laughs> um yeah you can only kidnap one person at a time definitely you know i was at the launch of the recent ones and they were making such a big deal about the stitching saying we use silk for the <laughs> stitching not cotton we're oh, the only manufacturer that uses silk and i, I wonder if that really would that sway you to, to buy a car it's not my number one priority when looking yeah, at a right. car i'm in looking on car sales to buy one. Oh, what did you find if i want one of the early 4.2 liter v8s yep they're definitely not as popular as the bigger motor. No, but there's a lot of them. There's 10 for sale in Australia. Yes, starting that's what, as I said. $70,000. Right, okay. However, from 2011 onwards, when they went to the 4.7, there's a dozen of them as well. But they start for at 110,000 or thereabouts. At how many Ks? And they're all sort of under 100,000 kilometres. So We've got 40, 70, 41 on this, 41 oh, on this. Is, this is a very low mileage one then. Yes. And then you could get the MC Stradale which is the really track focused one, which is really a bit hardcore. Yeah, Not I think nearly as comfy as this, but that's a track car. Yeah, definitely. There's a little bit of wonder. Do you, you've, I, can, I can feel it in the rear. I mean, when we go to sport, it just takes that stray air out of it. Yeah. It hasn't got that now. That's noticeable, isn't it? Yeah, it was. It just felt a little floaty in the rear. It's Not very noticeable. When you go to sport mode in this, it actually quickens up the changes by 40%. Yep. And it's really noticeable. And stiffens the shocks? Yeah, it's a quicker punch through the gears. Like, Show me. And then when it changes. Yeah. It's quite a quick change. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that gear change. As it is, it's the last of this shape. It's the, the last of the V8s. The next one now is a, is a V6 twin turbo. Yeah. This is not a light car. No, 1,880 kilos. You and I in it, it'd probably weigh 20, three times. <laughs> and especially you with all your brothers in the back. Yeah, no, have a look at them, you know, boys. Plenty of room for passengers. Yeah. I, I never knew you had a twin brother. Oh, well, triplets we are. Yeah. I've got three of us. Yeah. Identical triplets. Identical triplets. Who have we got? We've got uh, Rubens and Larry Ricketts. Yeah. Mm. What do you guys think? I reckon it's got heaps of room. Yeah. Stewie, it's got armrest over this side and a little armrest over here little cup here, holder here for the champagne oh. what do you reckon larry there's heaps of room isn't there i agree with you rubens there's heaps of room in here but i don't know about the champagne stuff mate i think i'd prefer a beer oh, well okay if you don't want champagne it'll be beer <laughs> they're your brothers aren't they stewie no they're your brothers they <laughs> look like you they don't look like me it's a long wheelbase two nine four two millimeters you know that's Eight millimetres less than a Kia EV6. Right. People move out, and that's long. That is a big wheelbase. They made 28,000 Gran Turismos. Not many, is it? Not on the world car scene. And 11,000 of the Grand Sport Cabrios. So Do you that's, like that's those? not a real lot. Uh, not as much as this. I, I like the coupe lines. But it ticked all the boxes. I like the look. I like the sound. I like the comfort. I didn't need all the other driver assisted features that you know put your foot on and it goes it's relatively straightforward it's only got two modes just sport mode or normal yeah that's about what i like flat out or stopped and it does stop well it's you got don't... good brakes yep brembo's turn turns well they're brembo's but with maserati branding on them oh that's important i think if people felt comfortable they were going up in value or holding the value then they'd feel better about buying one but i think there's still this connotation that if you buy a maserati get ready to suffer big depreciation I'm you, you'd, probably, you'd argue that that depreciation has already happened you let's that's yeah buy one second hand the depreciation you're not going to lose but not too old don't buy a 1980s vintage buy turbo absolutely not i'm sorry about the speed stewie i just find it hard to drive slow in this car <laughs> it just leaps away why, on me why can't you drive slower what's wrong with you it's just not a slow car it's not the sort of car you can just miss Daisy along in. I, well, I think it is. I, that's what I'd be doing. Okay. I'd just be, I'd just be loping along. We've got to swap over up here, and we'll see how. Why don't we do that? Okay. Yeah, straight away. You can notice that. 
it's it's a little floaty. Yeah, it's a gutter follow. It's a yeah. I don't think it's floaty. I think it follows the the lines in the road. That's what I feel it does. But it's imprecise. Yeah, very much. But change it to that, and it's different altogether, isn't it? I'll tell you at the first corner. Oh, you love the corners. And second. Yeah. Pedal heights are good. You could almost heel and toe in it if it was a manual. <laughs> they, they, match, are. they match very nicely, in fact. I've got probably tyres on it. Yeah. And no. they're at 32 psi cold. Yeah. Now, I've got them set at that just because it gives it that little... Uh, it's a little bit softer ride, not quite as harsh. But if you're going harsh driving, they need another four in them, I reckon. No, it's not the tyres. It's it's the Skyhook suspension, which is helping a lot with the ride. The ride's good. It's still very relaxed, yeah. And you can just lope along. There's six gear, 2,000 revs, and 100 k's. So work that out. Yeah, yeah that's... Well, 6,000 revs at 300 k's. Yeah. Yeah, so it's very long-legged. In fact, the other uh, gearbox was shorter geared. The F1 track style automated manual is, is not just fast at cone changes, it's uh, shorter as well. It's absolutely seamless changes. You don't notice it at all. Have a listen. Go down to fourth. Didn't, didn't even feel the only thing. thing. The only thing changed was the taco. So viewers, thank you for watching Incarnation today. That's Michael's Maserati 2014 Gran Turismo Sport. Thanks, Stewie. Doesn't it rev freely? Yep, keeps on pulling. There's a turbine like wine there, wasn't there? It does get a bit of a. What was that sound? It sounded like the, the afterburners coming on. I think it's the air rushing into the inlet manifold. Yeah. Induction noise. Yeah. But look, I enjoyed my drive. Thank you so much. That was lovely. We'll keep driving till we get to your car. I've only got a couple of k's to go. Okay. How economical is it, or not? Uh, on a trip around about 10, 10 and a half. Litres per 100 k? Yeah, litres 100. That's good. That's 30 miles a gallon. No, it's an extremely refined car, Michael. It's very nice. Oh, don't you love that? Doesn't it do that nicely? It does do that nicely. Hi, Skoda. <laughs> it's, it's getting old now, the old girl. You it's, can't get rid of that, Stewie. It won't be the same to see. I can't sell it. I'll have to give it to a family member. Hey, you made it right through to the end of the video. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please share it with your motoring friends. And above all, click the little subscribe thing down here so you can see the latest videos when we bring them out, hopefully each week. I look forward to seeing you soon.